we have to look at the peer, the new anti-terrorism bill not in isolation. We have to look at the anti-terrorism bill in the light of how the PTA and the emergency regulations have been used by the state in the past. Without looking at the Sri Lankan context, without looking at what has happened in the past, we will not be able to realize the full impact of the, of the anti-terrorism bill. So we have instances where the political authorities and the CID or the police have abused this right, the Prevention of Terrorism Act, to detain people who are not to their liking. So maybe political rivals, business rivals, or merely because of a person's ethnicity. Now the new law provides for the detention orders to be issued by the respective deputy inspectors general. We have approximately 50 deputy inspectors general in the country. Last week we saw certain senior DIGs complaining about their transfers and it was clear that there is an allegation of politicization. All what I am saying is the ATA provisions are worse. If you look at the Supreme Court judgment on the Easter Sunday attack, the court cites how the security apparatus failed. The, the, especially the failure of intelligence. The, fail, uh, not the intelligence warned. But between the intelligence warning and the security apparatus getting into action, there was a gap. How do you want to strengthen that gap? I don't think this law interests that at all.